What's going on guys, no guys here, welcome back to another video now. In today's video we're going to go over the progressive 532 and the 5212. The idea is we have a, a different system set up, so let's say for example we're going to become more attacking or more defensive. This can be done very easily using the 532 progress system. In case you guys don't know, this is kind of the, the 334. There's different variations of it. There's a defensive variation, attacking variation, and a more attacking variation. I know many of you guys have been waiting for this video, so I thought I'd go through it. So we have the base 532. So this would be a more defensive variation. This would be the more conservative approach. Let's say, for example, you're thinking, okay, you know what? You're winning. You don't need to score any more gold. Maybe you're, I don't know, 2-0 ahead. Then you'll use this staple 532. It's a defensive variation. When you get the ball flowing forward, these three, I should I suppose you can say center mids will stay forward, stay in their positions. But what if, for example, if you go into a game and maybe you want to go attacking, maybe it's nil-nil and the game just starting, you want to go to a more attacking variation. So this one is a bit of change, I'll explain it in a second. And this one we have, you know, one the center mids on balance and one them on get forward. So again, we're changing the system again. So let's say, for example, it's nil-nil. Maybe you're one nil down. You don't want to go too attacking. So maybe you have a system where one of your center mids gets forward all the time and then one of them just stays on balance to make yourself even more attacking. So that's the whole idea is there's a progress system and let's say after that, let's say, you know what, you're figuring out, okay, your opponent, he's reading you, he knows exactly what you're doing. And let's say for example, you're struggling to get past him, he's parking a bus, then you will change to the more attacking one. And this is where the 5-2-1-2 comes in. This is the original 5-2-1-2, but this is a very attacking formation. Defending is really hard with this formation, so that's why it's a progress system. So this way you can choose where you want to go. So in the 5-2-1-2 attacking, this way you're going to have the cam and the two strikers. You're going to be more attacking, and especially when you're going forward, these guys are going to overlap going to have a different type of attack so it's really really important you understand how the system works and i want to go through everything and the tactics and instructions to give you a better understanding of how it works but without further ado let's get straight into the tactics so the tactics itself so as i said the team does it it doesn't really matter too much what team you use um as i said at this stage of fifa everyone has well realistically speaking everyone has like a team of the season players so i understand that now the actual the actual base balance tactic remember this is the anti-kickoff tactic i still use that so if i'm let's say i go into a game and my opponent is kicking off first i will still use this formation for the first minute again everyone's on comeback and offense so whatever your formation is um let's say using a 4-3-3 because i'm using a 4-3-3 for chemistry purposes um as you can see over here i'm using a 4-3-3 and remember this is just the base formation for chemistry I'm going to use this formation to maximize as much chemistry as I can. Then once I go into the game, I change my dynamic tactics. So that is just a formation for chemistry. Then when the game starts, I will go to this 5-3-2. This is a defensive 5-3-2. Again, one width, four depth, fast build up play, one width, five players in the box. This is the original 5-3-2. You saw this video yesterday. And as you can see, it's a conservative approach. You know, we've got the left back and the right back on stay back while attacking. Again, how it turns into a 3-3-4, you guys know it. These guys go forward using the D-pad tactics. You sh I mean, you've seen that yesterday. If you haven't seen that video, go check that out on my channel yesterday. By the way, I do stream on twitch.tv forward slash nil guys. So if you want to see me stream this weekend league, make sure to follow me on twitch.tv forward slash nil guys. Link will be in the description and the competition down below. But anyway, yeah, so three center mids all on stay back while attacking. So this is a more conservative approach. Let's say, for example, you want to kind of go down the wing with your right back and you want to work the ball inwards, you know, use your three center mids to pass the ball around and pass the ball to your striker and do like a fake shot and score. That's the way you can do it. So this is the formation you would start with. Then let's say, for example, you go 1-0 down. It's 30 minutes. You're still using this formation. But you're like, you know what? You need to go more attacking. You've got too many players staying back. Your opponent is now parking a bus because he's 1-0 ahead. So you need a more attacking formation. Then you'll change to this 5-3-2. Now, it's basically the same. We've increased the width just a little bit more, just to spread our players out a little bit more when we're attacking. The defensive approach is still the same. But the most important thing now is we have one of the players on balance and one of the players on get forward. Now, um, if you have someone who's got a bad work rate, so let's say, for example, like, let's say he's low high or high low, and let's say, for example, well, so let's say he's, let's say like Makaleli, for example, he's got low attack and high, um, low attack and high defensive. You want him to get forward. If you leave him on balance, he's probably still going to roam around the defensive region. So in order to override those work rates, we're going to put this guy on get forward. So what happens is this guy is literally just going to go forward. So when he is attacking, he's going to kind of roam around, like, you know, go forward, sometimes go to a strike position. So again, your most attacking center mid, you'll put him here. So in this situation, I put a Bamiang here. Man, I said you can alter your team to however you would like here. Um, and don't worry about Blanc, that and Blanc, as I said, look, let's say, for example, Blanc gets pushed out wide, just change around. So, as I said, with each tactic, make sure you change the players. So, as I said, with Aubameyang, I want him here, go and get forward. And then the other centre mid, you can leave him on balance. If someone's like high, high, they're perfect here. If you have someone who's got a high, high work rate, they work perfectly in this role. But again, the idea is, if in this situation, you're like, okay, you know what? 
I need to go more attacking. This is it. So now you're going to have one player go staying back and you're going to have one guy kind of going forward and one guy kind of staying on a balanced roam. So he's kind of going everywhere. So again, making the formation even more attacking. Then let's say, for example, at this point, you still can't get past your opponent. It's like 60 minutes. Maybe you're 2-0 down or maybe you're still 1-0 down, but you really need to get a goal and you're struggling. Then you would change to the 5-2-1-2. Two, two. Now this formation is four width defensive. We've gone a bit more wider, just because the reason why we've gone a bit more wider, because people might waste time, and plus, um, I think you don't want to be too narrow in this in the central kind of column. So you want to increase the defensive width of these guys when you're defending. So that's why I made it a bit more wider to avoid your opponent from you know passing the ball around and wasting time. Depth still the same on four. You want to be too high, as I mentioned. Fast ball up play, three width again, like the the previous one to be a bit more attacking, a bit more wider when we're forward, and players in the box. This so way we have more outlets and more players coming into the box. Now, this is important when you're defending this formation. It's going to be hard to defend. So that's why this is an attacking variation. You know, remember, compared to the 5-3-2, you know, this guy, he sits in with a in a bank of three, in bank of three midfield. Now, when you're defending now with this formation, it's a different story. What happens now is when your opponent has the ball, right, you're gonna, your back, again, will be naked, but you're only going to have two center mids now. Now, this is extremely important. Now, when I say, as I said, when your back five is naked, there's no one in between, no one protecting them, you're going to be in trouble. So sometimes you're going to need to bring back your cam and kind of bring back him manually, bring him back manually. So yes, it will be more attacking, but defensively you will suffer. So only use this formation if you are seriously dying and you're like, oh my God, you know what? If I don't win this game, it's done. This is like two, no, this is like do or die. In my opinion, this 5-3-2 defensive is more than enough to attack. You're, all, you're already attacking in a 3-3-4. Over here, you're attacking like a 3-1-7, if my mass is correct there, maybe probably. <laughs> Probably not, but you know, you know, you get the point I'm trying to say. You get that extra two players going forward over there. So uh, the three one uh, six, should I say three one six? The correct terminology. Yes, three one six. This should be enough to attack. If you really can't, unless for example, you need that cam player to act as an extra striker. Because don't forget, many people are using a four 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 two or four one two one two or four two three one. You know, the way it's going to be lined up, you're going to have you know your your kind of your cam in between his cam. And his and his CDM, so that would be a good link-up player. But again, only use this formation if you are if you are losing two now. You need to get back into the game. Let's say at this stage you're thinking, okay, you know what? I got one goal back. Maybe it's two-two. It might be worth changing to the five-three-two. Again, it's better to be safe and be conservative with the three centimeters. That way, when you're defending, you'll be more stable. So yes, it can be more attacking, but it's only good to use this formation when you're losing. Again, key thing is when you're losing. So then you'll change to this formation. Now, the question I always get asked is, well, what if I'm losing in 80 minutes, 85 minutes, I don't know, let's say 75 minutes, you're 2-0 down, you need to get a goal. Well, you see, you can't use a team press with this formation. I'll explain to you why. You see, the problem is with this formation is, as I mentioned last video, you've got no wide players. So just imagine this setup. Imagine you're defending like this in this system, in this 5-2-1-2. Two, two. Now, when you're going to have a gap over here, a massive gap where your center mid is not covering in a 4-1-2-1-2, two, 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 but the problem is, is that your opponent has lobbed the ball from full back to full back, and there's nothing you can do about it because the left back and right back they're going to be sitting back when you're defending in a five defender formation. So your opponent can just legit run up and down here, up and down, lob the ball, run up and down, lob the ball. This is something you don't want to put yourself in. So yeah, again, it's an attacking formation. But if you're at a situation where you need to get the game, the, the you know the game back into the get, get yourself back into the game, should I say, you will use team press. Now, if at that moment you seriously can't get past, you know your opponent is wasting time deliberately, then you would change to the 442. Now, this is the exact same 442 I explained in the two videos before. Again, a very wide width. When you're defending, when your opponent has the ball, you want to cover as much as the pitch as possible. Now, the 442, as I said, the two strikers, the two centre backs, and the two centre mids are naturally cover 60% of the pitch. The rest of these guys, at least now you can press. If the, if the, if the opponent, if your opponent has the ball over here, you can press with your right attacking mid. I don't have to worry about your right back because he will still be there. As with the 5-3-2, if your opponent had the ball in the same situation, you wouldn't be able to press. Because if you try to press, you have to either bring out this player or you have to bring out your right back and you could get exploited. So again, the 4-4-2 is the better formation for pressing. So I know it's not part of the system, but it is the best formation for pressing. Now you're probably going to say, is, well, why don't you just use a 5-4-1? Well, you see a 5-4-1 is not really that good for pressing. Uh, because number one, A, when you're defending, you don't have the players over here. You only have one striker, so your opponent can now lob the ball from left back to right back. And again, I wouldn't use this for an ultra defensive formation either. I just wouldn't recommend it. And then secondly, you might say, why don't you change to a three defender formation? Well, you see a lot of people don't know how to press um, with like a 3-4-3. Three, three. So a lot of the times people just play a three ball in behind, so you're in trouble. So the safest thing to do is to go to a 4-4-2 and just use this formation. 
Right? If, if, for example, you score a goal, get off team press and then go back to your 5-3-2. This is the formation you'd only use for 10 minutes. So going back again, the first formation, again, you'll start with this formation, the conservative 3-3-4. You go into the game, you'll play very slow, methodically. You'll try to score a goal. This should be enough to attack. At that point, let's say you're really worrying, like, you know, like, oh my God, I need to get a goal. I don't want to let this go to extra time, whatever. Then you can go to the 5-3-2. This should be a formation where if you're drawing or if you're losing, then, and then, then at that point, then you change this formation. If you do score a goal and it comes back to like a 2-2, then go back to your defensive formation. Otherwise, if not, you stay here. So when you're losing, when you're winning, sorry, stick on this. When you're losing or you're drawing, you put this one on. Now, this is if and only if you're losing or you seriously can't get past park the bus, then a 5-2-1-2. And then the 4-4-2 is a die in scenario where you need to get the win. This is like, okay, you know what? You need to get the win ASAP. Then you change to 4-4-2. But that's basically it. And that is the formation. So again, you have an ultra defensive one. Again, don't forget, when you're defending, you don't really want to we don't want to park the bus. With this formation with a 532, it's not really efficient. The best way of the, the best form of defense, I would say, is attack. So using a 532 defensive, if if you really want to waste time, I'll tell you the secret is if you really want to waste time. Let these four backs run forward. Let his two let your two strikers be there and let your, your three midfielders be here and your three center backs be here. All you gotta do now is just pass the ball like this in between and whenever you're in trouble just lob the ball to the fullbacks because the fullbacks are always going to be free so if you want to waste time the key is to waste your waste time in your opponent's half then what you can do with this formation is let's say for example you're 2-0 ahead you're like you know what you don't need to score any more goals you put these guys both on false nine now this is a trick this is an actually an op trick so again what would happen here is that you're going to have your your left back and right back already high up the pitch right you're going to have your back three over here you're going to have your midfield three over here and you're going to have your two strikers on false nine roaming around. So this way you're going to have so many passing options. But you see your opponent still has to park the bus because the left back and right back are so far high up the pitch. So yes, you'll have no one in the middle in theory when the player is out of position. But you can always lob the ball to these guys. So you're always going to have passing options. This is a good way of wasting time. Remember, the best way to waste time is in your opponent's half, not on your own half. But anyway, guys, that is the progressive tactics um, you know, for the 5-3-2, as I mentioned. As I said, you want to balance... And remember, the most important thing is don't forget when you change between these tactics, there's a transition period. Sometimes you have to wait for the ball to go out of play or for the play to reset before a tactics changes. Sometimes it could change after 10 minutes. The most important thing is don't think, okay, you can switch between 5-3-2 and 5-2-1-2 in game in a split second. It doesn't work like that. But anyway, that is the progress tactic. So again, I would say 30% of the time use this, 40% of the time use this, I would say. Unless you're really losing or you need to get a goal 20% and the last 10%, if you're in a dire need and you're like, you need a goal ASAP, you need to press your opponent because you need to win the ball back, then change to a 4-4-2. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget, you can watch me on twitch.tv forward slash guides for free, obviously. Um, link will be in the description, so I'll let you know when I'm streaming. Thank you very much for watching. Take it easy and I'll catch you next time. Peace out, boys.